And it's six o'clock. Hello, everybody. And welcome to our 12th webinar on responsible hillside living. This time around, we're talking about tiny homes. Now we're looking at, is a tiny house right for you? I'm Robert Thompson, principal architect here at Aki Workshop. And we're going to be running through the different advantages and disadvantages of a tiny home. So let's get into it. What is a tiny house? So a tiny house is typically 400 square feet or below. Now, a typical lot in Port of Spain would run around 50 by 100, like a 5,000 square feet. And if you consider the dotted red lines are your setbacks required by town and country, that would be the scale of a, a 20 by 20 tiny house on a typical lot, let's say in Barataria. Um, so I don't know if any of you have experience living in a tiny house or is thinking about living in a tiny house. Um, any of you have experience with tiny homes? You could come off mute and just give a few words. Anyone? Hey, Maria. Can uh, you hear me? Yep. Hey, well, Maria. We live in a tiny-ish home. What size is your? Um, it's not like. So well, I'm not sure the exact square footage because we added on since we first planned. Mm -hmm. Um, but the hexagon shape is eighteen feet in like diameter. Um, I'm not sure because we added on like a ten by ten bedroom and then a small little bedroom as well. And how how is it working out for you so far? It's very enjoyable. Yeah. I love it. I think like tiny is the way. <laughs> I literally take like five minutes to clean and it's just the best thing I could have ever imagined. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'll be I'll be calling on you later on to give give us some, you know, thoughts on the different advantages and disadvantages that you've um encounters encountered since how long have you been in the house now? Um, we've been here for like six months. All right. All right. Lovely. Brilliant. Anybody else? Um, that one here. Thank um, you. Yeah, the well, the only ex real long term experience I've had is the studio apartment I had across the road from the U Tech. Oh yeah. Where it was really just a studio apartment. With a, with a, with, I mean, a comfortable size bathroom. Granted, it, it was a bathtub with a toilet literally leaning on it. I remember. Um, um, and the sink literally in your face as you're <laughs> sitting on the toilet. Yeah. But, um, but even thinking back to that experience um, as a student as well, despite I had a lot of stuff, a lot of possessions, it was a comfortable space mm. because the focus was studying. Yeah. So, uh, um, so I didn't really accumulate a lot of personal stuff. Yeah. I think mean, I did have a lot of little things, but um, I think while living there, I realized that, you know, I can't own anything big. Yeah. And that was fine. Um, but I did enjoy the open space on the outside. Yes. Um. Um, during that those two years that I lived on top there. Yes, yes, and I remember you had a, a, a you had a net in the ceiling to store stuff. Yeah, so the the owner had a lot of paintings, large paintings that were, um, I mean from well renowned international artists, um, and uh, I actually do not even use the majority of my closet because it was stored with paintings and the ones that couldn't fit. Yes. Yeah, I did string up 
yeah. a bunch of them up yeah. to the ceiling just to, just to clear yeah. the space. Yeah. So, yeah, it, but I mean, I, I always think about that time while I am even just tinkering and playing around with tiny home living. Yeah. So just some background, Declan and I went, went to school together. Declan is the reason I'm in Trinidad. So thank you, Declan. No problem. All right, anybody else with a quick word? Yeah, super quick. I mean, I lived in an RV for two years with me and my two children, a 19-foot RV Whoa. that was about six feet wide and had a bathroom, a kitchen, three beds, and um, a, cl a closet um, and a lot of storage and two car seats. And yeah, wow. so. All right, well, a little later, we're calling on you for some thoughts on the advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's jump into it. So I want to start with the disadvantages. And one of the disadvantages, which is obvious, is the limited space where, you know, if you have a large family, extended family, it's difficult to to host everybody at once if you're so inclined. So it, 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 it requires of you of a, a sort of lifestyle shift, uh, right? And, you know, you can't be claustrophobic. You have to have, you know, you have to be open to being <laughs> closed. Any, any, any thoughts on how you dealt with the limited space in your situations, like Jillian? Um, an RV is a little different because you have the whole world outside. True. So like you can go and park in a big forest. Mm -hmm. And um, and then once the weather got bad, we will just like pack up quickly. If a storm was coming and snow and just drive to Florida or <laughs> like when it got hot, we would drive to New England so then you can entertain outside, you know, things like that. But it was two children. They were homeschooled. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, we had to really compress things. The fridge was tiny. So you just learn to live with things outside of your living space. Right. And that takes, takes me to the next disadvantage, which is the storage challenges. Now, because of the, because of these sort of capitalist society that we live in, we're, you know, we're encouraged to just get lots and lots of stuff. So if someone is deciding to go the tiny house route, you have to then sh have a mindset shift away from the idea of like accumulation and just kind of think about what is most valuable to you because you really can't keep any everything, right? Any, any thoughts on that and how you guys who are, you know, engaged in tiny house living now are dealing with that situation? Malia? Still there? Um, I've actually found it pretty um, relieving not having as many things. It just, like, clears the mind space a lot. So I'm very bit with, like, even people sending food home with us I take my container because I don't want like a million containers, yeah. you know? So like it's all all aspects you have to think about, you know, don't have too many bowls, mm -hmm. don't have the world of like, well, I don't wear any makeup or anything, but I assume if you had a lot of those kind of things, you really have to narrow stuff down to needs more than once. Right, exactly. That's excellent. Now, the other disadvantage would be privacy concerns so you know let's say it's a number of you living in the same space eventually it starts to feel like you're living on top of each other and I mean it's difficult to overcome that apart from you know expanding but if you don't have the you know the means to expand then it all comes down to a mindset shift you know you have to then understand that you know you have you have inside which will be largely for sleeping and outside will be where your you know your recreational um activities are happening All right so i'm sure in in uh, as, as jillian mentioned that's kind of how you know you get around 
this disadvantage, right? Um, moving on to another kind of very important one is resale challenges. Sorry, I think Rachel has a. Rachel, you have a yeah, question. Yeah, um, yeah, on the on the, the privacy part. Um, mm -hmm. I don't live in a tiny house, but I could imagine that might be a bit of a challenge for persons with probably like older children. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and they may be looking looking to have their privacy. So I think it will be a lot of um, kind of family discussions in terms of who uses what, when, and, you know, I need to go to the bathroom and you need to go to the bathroom and all of that. So yeah. I, I think it would be interesting to navigate that with, um, I think smaller children might be easier, but mm -hmm. the older children might be a bit yeah. of a challenge. Now, now you, you think about like olden days or you know, in a certain socioeconomic situation, where you know 20 people live in one room right mm -hmm. that's you know already you know it, it's a, it, it, it's not chosen it's a tiny house <laughs> tiny house, yeah. tiny house living right yeah so just looking now at you know resale challenges now if you decide to you know embark on a tiny house buy some land build it you've narrowed your market for resale because you, 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 the 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 value won't be you know you have limited resale value and limited resale market now i i don't think resale is something that you'd be considering if you're building a tiny house i think most people would be considering expansion would would would, would you guys agree Um, yes, I do agree with that. I I think with a lot of people who do think about tiny home, who are planning to have a tiny home, I assume that they will think the long term. Yeah. Um, and I mean, this was one of the um, things that we discussed back in back in school mm -hmm. about expansion at the, uh, and and so forth. I mean. Uh, especially with young couples who would like to start with a tiny home. Yeah. And it's up to not just architects, but designers, consultants to, to ensure that they know what the clients are getting into, mm -hmm. um, to ensure that their their investment is is going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. In order to build in stages if need be, or allow the flexibility to um morph the living space mm -hmm. into what they need, even if it is that you're not getting into yeah, in terms of uh, I mean not everybody plans to have children, mm -hmm. but some of them are not do have children. Yeah. And uh, they will then try then they would need to adapt somehow so hopefully they will get the right guidance into yeah. it yeah 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 definitely definitely that's a great that's, that's a great point now yeah i totally agree with that mm -hmm. because well we built our tiny house with a loft and, right. and then of course i got pregnant and realized that those tiny stairs and not being able to stand in the loft really wasn't happening for me being so pregnant. So we added on this whole next bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we thought it was going to be two of us for a while. And then now, as soon as we moved in, it's three of us. So, yeah, but we always knew we had this footage outside to expand, but we didn't think it would happen so soon. So, soon. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Well, thank God for that. All right. So the last disadvantage, which would mainly be a situation where, you know, uh, a tiny home on wheels would be sort of sensitive to weather, sensitive to, to you know, any kind of natural disaster happening. Whereas if you're building a standalone um, tiny house, you'd be more, you know, um, reinforced against things like that. Right, so there's not many disadvantages, but the disadvantages are mainly to do with personality. If you agree, um, 
you have to want to live this way. You know, I know it's kind of like a nice idea now to some people or, oh, it's cheaper, but you, you have to want to live in a tiny home because it's not easy. You know, it, it, it requires planning. It requires, you know, a certain mindset. Now, let's get on to the good part where we talk about the advantages. Now, one of the main advantage where I'm concerned on a hillside is the minimal environmental impact. Now, to build a regular sized house on a hillside, if like if you're not taking it into consideration, if, let's say you know a lot of people try to build flat houses on hillsides. So what they do is they you know um, cut the land, create a flat area, and build a flat house. Whereas other people would consider the slope and try to build with the slope. But with a tiny home, because you have a tiny footprint, you're not necessarily forced to bring in heavy machinery, clear a lot of space. You could live in, in, in amongst the trees because you're so small, right? So I think this is one of the main advantages for me as an architect who, you know, I'm sensitive to the, to the environment and to the land I build on. I always like when somebody comes to me and they're, they're looking to build small, right? Um, any words on that? I mean, Rihanna, you, you probably have some thoughts on this because you recently completed yours. Uh, definitely. Uh, I feel as humans, sometimes I question my decision of if it's too tiny. Um, and my biggest fear of being on a hillside is coming home one day and the house, for whatever reason, of soil slippage in the rainy season that it's just gone yeah. um so it's almost a practice of impermanence so like on a more philosophical level that in 50 years i mean ideally the home would still be there um but it's kind of like there are greater forces um mm -hmm. that we have to be humbled by as well yeah but a closed loop system for sure is like the ideal um of being sensitive of that and kind of trying to design in synergy with what is around me. Yeah. And it's easier to do that with a tiny house. You know? Definitely. Definitely. And it's never, never too small, as they say. <laughs> All right. So the next advantage is I, th I think that the, I think that Glenn was going to say something. Sorry. Oh yeah. I actually was I actually just realized that I'm actually living in the 400 square foot <laughs> studio <laughs> apartment. It's just that I live on my family estate, which is seven acres. So I'm I actually just realized this from the front of the I am living in a tiny space. And that's a great um, point. Along on, on a hillside. <laughs> that's well. a great point. That's a great point. Because living in a tiny house in the middle of Barataria is different from living in a tiny house in the middle of Santa Cruz on seven acres, you know? It would it, it you have your proximity to nature, whereas with a tiny home in let's say Barataria, you could create your own nature around you because you have the space left to mm -hmm. escape and do what you want. You know, create create you know um, food independence if you if you're so inclined. But yeah, that's a good observation, Dick. Yeah. All right. So natural ventilation, which is an easy one, um, with a smaller footprint with not much blocking you have a much more comfortable experience within a tiny house, right? I'm sure, like Malia, I'm sure you definitely have thoughts on this because you live in a, a earth, well, a clay structure, yeah? Yeah, Um. at first we, well, of course the house is built with all clay, Play walls mm -hmm. um so it is a degree cooler um at night and in the things for sure it's definitely cooler than being in a concrete um house or room but to combat this trini hot sun yeah we we did have to put an 
the accessory with the baby because mm -hmm. the plan was to have everything open all the time but then of course there's mosquitoes there's yeah. bugs things crawling at night mm -hmm. you know so so we did uh, I think my house design is a little not it doesn't have the best natural ventilation um in terms of like airflow mm -hmm. just because how we situated some of the walls and the windows but the clay definitely is a lot cooler and it's just to me nicer mm -hmm. to kind of live in and be surrounded by right right yeah no once i mean airflow is important and once you have you know the narrower footprint you get that natural ventilation and cross ventilation happening All right the next one is natural light which is important in a typical house i mean i'm in a space right now it's really really dark or i mean it's night night's coming out but we tend to have darker spaces here in the caribbean um but you know if you have a space that invites the light and you could then modulate that with your curtains as you like and with a tiny house you depending on how it's designed you can you know make the make the most of the sun in 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 in, in the um kind of like rainy season time and kind of shade yourself from it in the in, in in the dry season so it's easier to modulate sunlight in a tiny house than in a um you know regular house because you don't have as many walls for one um that you're combating right now the next one is connection to nature now like Jillian said you know she because she was living in an RV she could move around and you know be in the forest this day and be at the seaside the other day and with a tiny house you're you're more inclined to living outside because you have created the space for nature to take over right and you have a easier connection and you know uh, uh, it, it's much better for your well-being i think um no i think rihanna would have a lot to talk about with this one as well as melia because you guys live in in um you know a lot of greenery so what's your thoughts on this advantage how has it changed since you've moved into your tiny homes. I mean, I think there's no comparison for all of the issues you spoke about because also <clears throat> you have less um, work to do to indulge the things that make the modulation of sunlight. So for example, if you're in a big house and you need to do awnings, you need to do like a ton of awnings. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to do an awning, a jealousy, uh um storm shutter curtains whatever and you have a big house you have to do so much of it mm -hmm. whereas in a tiny house you can really go to town with how you're organizing light um ventilation like right now we're sitting on our front porch in a long time version of a house which is inevitably a small slash medium house it's not tiny but a small slash me you know medium and you just always, the birds are all around. Everything is all around. Mm -hmm. you're, you're one small room or small porch away. And the on the land, our house is 12 by 12. So it's, you're close. To, it's amazing that way. Yes. Like when I go into people's big houses, when I go up to a temperate country, I feel like I am losing my stability. Because you cannot hear birds, you cannot see things, you have to go by windows. So you mm -hmm. get kind of accustomed to it. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Any other thoughts? I could add yeah. that quality of sleep. Oh, go ahead, Maria. Oh. Um, yeah, I was just thinking that, you know, the connection to nature is really one of the major reasons why we build a tiny house because it just you know you you have less space so you spend a lot more time outside mm -hmm. um of course we have the vision of growing all our own food and those kind of things so it really pulls you out of the house 
and outside where you actually get to, you know, um, reach your goal. Mm-hmm. And of course, we have a lot of huge windows and stuff in our house because that's what we wanted. But just being able to like literally any corner of this house, you could see outside, which is really nice. It's in a, in a nice location on 35 acres of land. <laughs> but the the tiny house I think really lends towards being connected to outside a lot more. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Brianna? I mean Malaya has baby chicks and a mama hen on her doorstep outside her room. And, and um <laughs> uh, but I would just add just for mental health, definitely um regulating the nervous system. Definitely what Jillian said with Hitler waking up to birds or like the sun or just the sound um, of rain. It's, I mean, it's a special sensation for sure. I've slept much better. Um, and I feel like a home is where you spend a third of your life sleeping, ideally. Um, so that quality of sleep. It, but there are like, you know, some things to watch out, especially for family and friends that are scared of frogs and lizards and you know all sorts of creatures and I'm waiting for the day I have a, a snake on my um my doorstep as well um but I guess it's just a part of it too I mean you learn it's an opportunity to study um identify different species and I think deepen that intimacy which is really important in our society yes yes so true so very true so um, somebody else was going to say something somebody else had, had on me before Anybody else? No? Maybe they changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> so just jumping on to the last advantage. And, you know, Malia, Rihanna, Jillian, Declan, you all have must have a sense of, like, adventure, you know, to want to embark on a tiny home. Because, you know, it's, it's not common um but you do have you know that it, it's thrilling to live in a tiny house because you know you're close to everything that's happening you know you're not locked away in a room and something's happening and you don't know you're just you're 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 a part of the land and you know you're you're able to you know commune with the land people come over you're mainly outside you know um, so I think, you know, that's a, that's a great advantage to living in a tiny house. Um, and I would encourage more people to, you know, think about it, especially as a starter home, because you could always, depending on how you, you design your house, you could design it to expand, especially in a hillside, um, it, where it's a, a little bit more challenging on a hillside, but you could de design your house to expand and start from, you know, something small. And as your family grows, it grows with you. And that way you have a longer time to consider what you're doing, consider how what you're doing affects the environment, the land, and your 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 neighborhood. You know, and I think that's something we're missing. We don't think about the neighborhood as much anymore. Um so to to, to finish off, I just wanted to talk on this image or you know, show this image of uh tiny house sitting within its context and kind of like it echoes everything that Rihanna, Milia and Gillian talks about. And I just wanted to throw a general question out to everybody to see who's either, who's interested in, you know, exploring a tiny house or who's, you know, kind of like toying with the idea and who's actually going for it. Anybody? Cecile? Well, we have a partially built one, so I don't know what oh, yeah. you, you mean. You're definitely going for it already. Okay. Uh, Cecile, you had your hands up? Well, yes, I was just saying that I'm interested in exploring the idea. I mean, I don't know how tiny I could actually go. Um, because although it's, it's me and two children, they're children who are on the verge of 11 and 13. Um, as it is, we have a space where they share a bed 
they share a bedroom and I have my own bedroom and you're already talking about my space and we don't have enough space and you don't give me enough space and locking doors and odd things like that Mm -hmm. so that is um, a caution for me but for all of the advantage advantages you gave they're all the reasons why I want a tiny home like I certainly want to be in nature deeply immersed in it and I do want to spend more time outdoors so yeah it's something I'm very interested in also cost is a factor because Mm -hmm. if I do have to build which is is looking like what it would be I will have a very limited budget um and I feel like you know tiny should mean smaller costs as well so for that reason is also more feasible yeah so impact wise it's better and yeah cost feasibility is also a bonus Right. So there's quite a few people interested. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ronaldo, you want to come off mute and, you know, tell us what's drawn you to a tiny house? Hey, guys. You hear me clearly? Yep. All right. Um, what drew me to a tiny house? Um, I would say this was during COVID and I had like a bigger design plan. And then I had to be real with myself about, yeah, this isn't going to work out financially Mm -hmm. because I'm financing the entire thing myself as a way of kind of connecting back to the old school way of doing things where you learn how to build a house and then you save up your money and you build it like piece by piece so it could be more connected with the final product. Um, So then when I started exploring it, because I I did my, uh, my design to myself, like amateur designs and then... I'm in the process now where we have a foundation because I'm, I'm building up on Paramount side. So I'm building oh. on a mountain. Uh-huh. Um, so I have my foundation laid and I'm going through the process of um, getting my actual designs done by um, a client of mine who's an architect. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can now follow these designs and like piece by piece put everything together. Well done. And um, what, what, what I kind of wanted to do was, as I'm teaching myself a lot of these things, so like I took a construction course, so I get better a better idea, so how this construction works in terms of materials and that kind of stuff, and um, the science behind it and that kind of thing. Right. Um, what I also want to do is try to impart whatever it is I learn from whatever mistakes I make or from information handed on to me. I want to give that to my people in my age group now, because a lot of us we want a home, but we mm-hmm. can't afford a large home. But we may have the ability to afford a small home. So, whatever information I get could be anything. Yeah. That way. Uh, right. Do you guys say me too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've gone okay, a bit. Hold on. Now, what you're saying just gave me an idea. I think it would be interesting to set up a resource where... Yeah, like... yeah I'm hearing you. Yeah. So, no, I was saying no. that... I was saying it would be it would probably be interesting to set up a resource where people who are interested are already doing it. So, Rihanna did it. Malia did it. Um, Declan's living in it. Where we could share, you know, our experiences and kind of like help the people who are interested um, to kind of learn from, you know, whatever we discovered in creating our own tiny homes. Now, I think, um, who else? Anthony, Jabari, Myers, you're considering building one as well? You know, come off mute and and talk and tell us about it. Uh, hi guys. Um, I don't know if you're here. Yeah, we are. Currently. Yeah, I have been considering it for a while for similar reasons as well. With um, as Ronaldo mentioned, regards mm-hmm. to um finances and um also from the um aspect of minimalism and being in touch with nature. Mm-hmm. So um I that really is 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 the idea behind me wanting to have 
a tiny home. Nice. I I am also very big on advocating for uh, basically maintaining as much as well being in environmentally friendly as much as possible mm -hmm. with whatever I'm doing. Um, natural ventilation, natural lighting, that sort of thing. So that's basically yeah. my ideas and my thoughts behind yeah. having a, um, a tiny home. And wherever I decide to have it, probably mm -hmm. in a more, I would say, um, now country, country living. Yeah. Now we have a huge resource on the call here. Jillian and Lassa have been building a tiny home for, for a few months now, and they've built it from collected items. So Jillian, you want to talk about it a little bit? I mean, I've seen it, it's beautiful. Um, well, it helps to have a partner who's a carpenter by training. True. And whose dad built, you know, like, um, Lassa's mom has a grass roof house in Denmark. So mm. he had to learn like some very basic building techniques without commercial materials. And um, so we've we just basically we had applied for a loan with ADB and they wouldn't approve our loan because they said they're not allowing anybody to build in Maracas anymore above a certain height. And so it means that the whole house has to be built with cash mm -hmm. or with what we have. So we had rocks on the land. We had, um, when Pelican was being dismantled, my mother had bought some of their, like they were getting rid of wood and it was really cheap. So we've had it here for years. And that was a cross beam and the foundational beam. And then we got French doors from someone else. And our people are always giving away galvanized. So we got galvanized. Mm -hmm. So most of the house hasn't required buying things. Um, the hardest part is, of course, when you're on a steep slope, you have to transport yeah. things either by hand or you have to build a road. And that costs money. Yep. So that's what we are next about to do. But everything yep. else has been. And then we have a chain, a chainsaw mill. So mm -hmm. any trees that needed to be thinned for growing could be cut into planks. Mm -hmm. So that was used for the roof. So Lassa has extensive um, capacity mm -hmm. to build and to communicate about building. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it makes a massive, massive difference. If I had to live my life over again, I definitely would try to get on a job site, a work site for parts of my time. Yep. Yep. Now that's that's an important point you brought up about access, especially on a hillside. Like we a few years ago we were helping a client with building a small cabin that was somewhere in like the middle of a repo. And we had designed it so that you could fabricate the different parts and go there and like, you know, bolt it up together. But then, you know, it, it, it the cost got so much because you had to fabricate all these parts. So that kind of comes back to kind of, mm, you know, how much you could do yourself is really important. So that's a good point there about access. Jean-Claude. Yeah, hi everyone, hi. Um, I I just wanted to share the perspective of um, a tiny house as a, as a short-term rental. Um, and I think, I think, um, there are a lot of houses all over trying the beach house model. You know, mm -hmm. people have built beach houses all over big things. And um they really do have, you know, they 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 big and they, they're kind of clunky. And and from my experience, um so far a lot of people gravitate to for for rental, something smaller, something where you could connect more, something um something unique. A more unique experience, a more unique living experience, because um, apart from a home, well, as a place for yourself, but uh, you know, um, I think creating unique architecture is also a way of giving, and is also a way of creating an experience for for people um, mm -hmm. who may not be able to experience it by means of their own lives. You know, they they may have already committed to a certain structure, already inherited, 
a particular yep. size hog, but yep. you know, but to be able to make these spaces available as experiences, I think is very important. Is it very important for people to be able to 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 get that perspective? Yep. And actually, I think um, it it is one well, of the beauty of it is that. With at a lower cost than like building very extravagantly, I think you could, uh, you know, something could be much more coherent mm -hmm. and um, and much better thought out, and just punch far above its weight, um, compared to to, to larger, to larger spaces. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that's that's something to think about. A tiny house as a as an investment, as as a as a business opportunity. Definitely. Thanks for sharing. Declan? Yeah, so I've been following the tiny house movement for some time. And as a designer, one of the things that kind of bothers me a lot with stuff that you find online in the literature and so forth is that, the, that a lot of it um, it seems that everyone everyone wants to live the same way. Now, a tiny home, tiny home living is a relative. Um, so going back to um, to, to a, a small family, mm -hmm. a, a small family cannot live in not I wouldn't say couldn't, but they don't have to live in a trailer size home. Mm -hmm. They can live if they want to, and if they can, that is great. Or if maybe that's all they can afford, but if they, but I mean, a tiny home don't is not a, a single footprint. I mean, and also there's there are a lot of challenges with building tiny or design or building small as well in terms of the rising cost of materials availability of materials availability of good reusable um, material as well. Mm -hmm. So going back to what you were kind of suggesting earlier, I believe that it is um, having these tiny home or tiny living um, seminars, forums, webinars, and so forth is um, especially localized could be beneficial in the long term. Yeah. Um, yeah. To educate people as to what they can get, what they'll be getting into if they're considering it. Yeah. And also to get the various bodies involved mm -hmm. um, to recognize it as well, as we all know. Yeah. Um, trying to keep uh, trying to get approvals or not things of these type of things in turn that is difficult. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um the people on this call, if you're interested, maybe you you know send us an email, we start to connect people. Um maybe we start a forum where we kind of have a conversation about tiny homes specific to Trinidad, you know, and start to share resources and help. Because I know, I know like Rihanna, for instance, she did this all on her own with no experience. And it will be good to have people to pass ideas through and get help, you know? So I think a forum would be beneficial to all of us. And whoever else is thinking about doing a tiny home. Yeah. So I want to close off now. I think that's a great idea to, you know, you guys, you know, had lovely ideas. And, you know, for the ones who are actually already living it, you know, I commend you guys. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, and, you know, any way we could support you, you know, let us know because we are, we are about, you know, improving the built environment and improving you know how we build on hillsides especially and i mean jillian and i we're familiar with each other and we already have kind of like a, a, a it, we're in conversation about you know establishing an, a, a a collaboration where we look at um alternate ways of building so that's something we could also share when, once that gets going so stay tuned and if you're interested, um, you could send us an email about, you know, what you're planning to do and what kind of help you'd need or what you're finding difficult. And we could, you know, speak to everybody, whoever is willing to, you know, give advice 
and yeah, we see how we can help you. All right. So thank you all for coming on today. And I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. See, you know, how we could um progress the tiny home revolution in Trinidad. Tiny home on hillsides. <laughs> or on the flat, wherever you want it. All right. Thank see you very you. much. You're welcome. And see you on the next one. Yeah. Declan, it was lovely seeing you. Yep, so I have.